Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me again. I'm departing from the normal things that I usually do on here. I usually focus, as you know, on Illustrator, Photoshop, Onyx, things like that. Um, I recently had a, a need to create a bunch of sample files for a trade show. Now, the sample files were all going to be exactly the same size. And the only thing really that was going to be different between all of them was going to be the graphics. And I was trying to figure out the most expedient way to do that, right? Uh, the efficiency. I've got a lot of files that I need to work on. So I wanted to show you this. This is actually using InDesign, uh, another Adobe product, to uh, do data merge, which is something that InDesign is, is capable of doing. But working with images is a little bit unusual. There's a couple of extra steps that need to happen along the way. So I want to show you what that's all about. Let's get cracking. Okay, so I have InDesign open here. I'm going to create a new file. Um, I already have, I cheated, the, I cheated the system a little bit. I've got a sample template all set up. Uh, in this case, uh, I happen to be, this is going to be a 24 by 18 sample file that I'm working with. I have my margin set up here. Uh, when, I, when I print on a flatbed, I always want to make sure that I come in a little from the edge. It's usually not my printer that I'm using, and I don't want to put ink on someone else's belt. Uh, the bottom, you'll see why that two and a quarter becomes important. It has nothing to do with data merge, but it has to do with my design. The important thing, though, is right here under facing pages. Um, notice here under margins, I have top, bottom, left, right. If I change that, if I turn that on, now it becomes top, bottom, inside, outside. So essentially, I'm going to have a left page and a right page. In this particular uh, file that I'm working with, just because of the nature of how I'm doing this, these are singles. I'm, there is no left and right. I'm not doing a book or anything like that. So I do want to make sure that facing pages is turned off. So I'll go ahead and hit create now and give it a second. And here now we have on screen my file, all right, my template. Now, if I come over here to pages, this is the, the really cool part. Right now I'm in page one. That's what this means right here. I only have one page. But up here, these are my, my master pages. And by default, the first master page, other than none, which is just a blank page, the first master page is called a parent. If I double click on that so that now that's selected, anything that I do in this file, so even if I just create just an ellipse here, okay, is in that page. And if I create a new page, let's insert, I don't know, five pages. There we go. You can see every single page has that on there. All right. And it's not selectable because it's part of my master page. All right. This is part of my master. So let me undo that. Let me go back to my master page here. Uh, I'm going to place just a couple of, of graphic elements that I use. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a tagline down here that I use. Uh, so let me just get this into position. That's actually why I have that two and a quarter inch there. Um, that serves as my, my kind of boundary. Uh, let me make sure. Yep. And then the other thing that I need to do in this case is I want to center my type top and bottom. Um, so if I go under um, text frame options here, uh, vertical justification, I want that centered. And now it's centered. Uh, last thing I do is I throw an HP logo whoops, in the corner right there. Okay, so now here's my template, and you can see if I go over to pages here, right, there it is. And like I said, even if I go to try and select this, I can't. The next step that I'm going to do is actually create a placeholder frame. That is this guy. You can see rectangle frame tool. There's also a rectangle tool that actually places a rectangle. In this case, the rectangle frame it means that it's going to be filled with something else later. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on this 
and I'm going to fill that space that I've created. And I can make sure that, yeah, it's 23 and a half by 15 and a half, which is what I want. Now, ordinarily, when I'm going to just go ahead and place a graphic in there, if I come over here, uh, first of all, let me do this. Let me go into display performance and we're just going to go typical. I don't want it fast um, just so that it looks okay uh, when I go to when I go to do this. But if I come over here um, under fitting, there's frame fitting options and I can... Um, I can fit my content and what I can do is either fit my content proportionally, fill it proportionally or fit the content to frame. Um, fit and fill, the difference between the two is um, kind of like when we first went to DVD and you started getting those stripes on the left and right side of your screen. Uh, if I do fit content proportionally, it will... It will um, It'll maximize the smallest dimension to fit this frame. And if I fill frame proportionally, proportionally, it will uh, maximize the largest uh, to fit. So it's the difference between cropping it uh, in the case of fill or not cropping it and maybe leaving some white space in the course of fit. Uh, but ordinarily, I would do that here. But you're going to see as we progress that actually I don't need to do that in this case. I just always like to point that out when because I, I get that question fairly often from people and say, how do I how do I automatically size things within that? So that's that's where that is. Um, but uh, honestly, in this case, it, it doesn't matter much. All right. So. Here's what I need to do. Before anything else, I'm going into, uh, this is the folder where I have, this is where all of my landscape graphics are. And, and you can see I have a lot of them, okay? I've got 40 items. So rather than place, 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 that's the reason I'm doing this is so this can be automated. All right, this is really, really cool now. Um, what I'm going to do is if I I selected these files, okay, where is home? There it is. Copy path. Okay. See that? Uh, older versions of Windows, Windows 10, you'd actually have tabs across here. One of them would say home and under home, you would see copy path. This is Windows 11. So uh, I just have to click the three dots or probably if I expand this window, no, still not. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and hit copy path. All right. Now, the next thing that I need to do is create a new spreadsheet. All right. Yeah, I have to use a spreadsheet for this. This is how data merge works in, in InDesign. So I'm going to go ahead and create this here. And in my very first cell, I'm going to call this. Uh, I'm going to type in here whatever I want that placeholder to look like inside InDesign. So I will just do file name. But here's the thing. In order to make it so that InDesign knows that it's a graphic, I need to put an at in front of it. And here's the thing times two. Watch what happens when I hit enter that function isn't valid. So in Excel, if I start off a cell name with an at, it is going to assume that I want to work with a formula. Okay. Um, now, or a function. If I'm doing this in Google Sheets, I don't have that limitation. But so what I need to do here is put a single quote in front of it. There it is right there. And once I do that, the single quote disappears, but what that does is it tells Excel that what I have here is text and that that first at is actually text, not the beginning of a, of a function. Now that I've done that, all I need to do, okay, is paste. Control V and look at that. All of my pads, my complete pads are here, okay, all of my files. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save as. Okay, save it to my desktop or to my documents. Now nah, we'll save it right to the desktop. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. 
We'll save it there. And we're going to call this uh, landscape images. And here's the thing right here, CSV, comma delimited. Okay, this is the really, really important thing here to do. And I can do that either here, there. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to change anything in this particular case because I don't have special characters. All right, but CSV. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. That saves it as a text file and all of these things are just going to be a series of commas between everything and that's what InDesign is going to work with. Now what I've done here I've done on Windows machine. If you're on a Macintosh it does become a little bit more complicated. I'm not really clear on how to um, how to copy path names, full path names in, in um, Mac OS. Um, my understanding, and I have no way of backing this up, is if I option right click or option control click, same thing, uh, I can choose copy and then as path name. And then what I need to do, there's an extra step. I need to open a new document in text edit. I can paste it. Then I can save it with a TXT extension, write a text file, and I can open that in Excel. Uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, so I, but I'm, I just have no way of testing whether that's accurate or not. Okay. Um, but I, I, as we saw, this works fine on windows. I'm just unclear on where it is on the Macintosh. Okay. So I'm back inside now, um, my InDesign document. And what I need to do is go to window and then utilities and data merge. Okay. This is where I actually do my, my, my database, right? My merging. And it tells me exactly what I need to do. Select data source from the panel menu, drag the data fields from the panel to the frames, all right? And then create a merge document. So here's the way we do this. I'm going to click on this little icon here, the three lines, aka the hamburger icon. I'm going to go ahead and hit select data source. I'm going to navigate toward my file, okay? And now you can see I have file name here. Uh, which is what I called that that field. And you see that there's a little graphic icon there. So now let's come over here and just drag it into this uh, placeholder frame here. And now if I hit preview right down here, look at that. Now, let's do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, let's go to content placement options right now that's where before remember the frame options so right now it's fit image proportionally and you see what's happening uh right here the left and right this is the extents of my um of my artwork or you know my my graphic and so it's not filling that frame so first i do want to center it in frame and i want to fill frames proportionally. And if I hit OK, yeah. Turn preview off, turn preview back on. And there it is filling the whole thing. Now, um, display performance. If I do high quality display, I'll get this in a much better, uh, much better view, right? So there we go. Now this is page one. If I come over here to my arrows, Here's page two. It's going to take a moment because I do have high quality display on, but there's number two. There's number three. And it takes a moment to, as I said, uh, there's number four. Now, this is not a finished file yet, right? If I come back over to pages, I still only have one page. So now there's one other thing that I need to do before anything else. Um, and that is I actually need to... Um, Go back here to this hamburger icon and I'm going to create a merge document and do I want all my records, a single record? So right, which of my files do I want? I want all of them. Uh, per page, I want a single one. You can actually do multiple pages. You can nest pages in this way. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then under options, make sure, there we go, fill proportionally, center and frame. I can link images or I can embed them, doesn't really matter. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it is going to take a moment to do this because I've got 40 graphics that it needs to place. All right, and now we're done. I get a quick report that says no overset text was generated. If I have a bunch of text in there, it could it could change things. Um, and now I'm on my parent page right here. Um, but if you look at my masters, or not my masters, but my actual pages, there we go. And if I uh, if I zoom out here, right, I can see all of my pages ready to go. Right. So the only thing that I might want to do, just depending on the content, I might want to come in and move things around. Um, this is a new document, so my my um, display performance has gone back to typical display. By the way, fast display just does that, right? Just a gray box with an X through it. Um, but so let me go to high quality really fast. Uh, let's say I wanted to move this this bike down a little bit. Um, if I so you can see if I zoom in here you can see what's going on this right here represents the extent of the actual art that's in the file but it's being cropped by my frame right there so I have a little bit of wiggle room to work with and I could I could drastically move this down just to show you what's happening it's still cropping it right so I can bring this up until it's right at the top if I wanted to, right? And I can do that with, with really any of my files, right? You know, I could resize this, I could I could scale this this truck up and then move it around, you know, whatever. Okay. Um so there you have it. Uh at that point the only thing I would need to do is go ahead and just save this out. Uh, how I want to do that, probably I would come over either if I already have a, a, uh, a file ready to go, uh, an, a PDF preset, I could just choose that directly. Uh, this is the one that I typically use, or I can go to export, which just goes the long way of doing that uh, and gives me options here. And then it'll open up a whole bunch of different you know, what, uh, how do I want to actually save this file, right? All of my Acrobat. This will save it as a multi-page Acrobat. Uh, so you'll get one single file that has all of these graphics in it. So there you have it. Uh, that is data merge uh, with images, not just words or, or uh, whatever, but anytime you have a graphic. So remember the key thing to keep in mind when you're doing data merge with images is you need to put the full path name there, right? So all the way, you know, all the way the, you know, C colon backslash or whatever it is uh, to your file name, including the dot tiff or whatever extension um, and your, your field name, which is, which is your topmost item on that list. Uh, your field name has to start with an at, which means in Excel, it also has to really start with a single quote. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I know this has been kind of complicated and long, but uh, uh, hopefully you found some value in that. As always, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.